This case is pretty cool. This is the Height Y60. Unfortunately, the marketing on the Y60's website isn't particularly helpful. For example, it says, quote, cold floor cooling keeps thermals lower than a partly cloudy day with a light breeze and you without your jacket. What? Anyway, we're going to review this case and try to help you understand what it's trying to be because we're not really, not really sure what any of that means. This is clearly an O11 inspired case. It has the front corner chopped off though, so it starts to look more like an aquarium or a fish tank, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The Y60 does some really interesting things with overall design. It's got a lot of complexity and really fine attention to detail in it, and it makes it one of the most interesting cases we've looked at recently although there's a lot of testing we need to do on thermals. Before that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's X570 Dark motherboard. The EVGA X570 Dark is a high-end motherboard for AM4 CPUs, built around extreme overclocking and tested heavily by EVGA's Kingpin. The X570 Dark has a uniquely rotated socket and RAM layout, 90-degree rotated cables for ease of installation and management, and tons of troubleshooting features to make building, testing, and overclocking easier. Check out EVGA's X570 Dark high-end motherboard at the link in the description below. So just to get this out of the way, Height HYTE, is an iBuyPower brand. Height is not a new, out-of-nowhere thing. iBuyPower has been around for, I think, a couple decades at this point. So all they've done is spin off a new component-only division that's called Height. Patrick and I agreed with this decision because when we pulled the case out of the box to start the review, both of us looked at the case on our build table and had the same reaction, which was, wow, this looks a lot better than either of us expected it to be. And because of what GN is, our discussion that followed was, why did we expect it was not going to be impressive? What, what bias or influence is there underneath that made us feel that way? We came up with the answer, I buy power. So it's good that Iowa Power has distanced itself from the component brand because this is far better quality than we've ever seen from an Iowa Power computer. It's a bit of a backhanded compliment, but it is what it is. You take them where you can get them. Anyway, the Y60 is a $200 MSRP case. It comes in a few options. So it's got black, white, or red. We intentionally chose red when Height asked us which to send over because it's the most unusual of the three options. And it's one of the trickiest to get right. We're actually impressed with the result too. The red coloring looks great here. And in some ways, perhaps it's not too surprising that this case does interesting and creative things with its design. The designer behind it, Rob Teller, doing a lot of the work, formerly worked at NZXT during its early glory days with the S340, the original S340, not the elite one that they sort of screwed up later. And the S340, although it wouldn't score as well today as it did for us back then, was fairly revolutionary in its ease of installation features and its cable management specifically. So we expect to see some good focus there on this case since it's sort of the same designer behind much of it. And this is what's fun too about reviewing cases where as you work on them more and more, you start to see the different signatures of the different designers in the industry and everyone's got something unique that they do well uh, and most of them have something that they do very poorly as well. So we always look out for those weaknesses too. So cases that stray from the usual black or white color schemes typically sell fewer units. Seeing a red or an off color design indicates to us that the company is committing to this product pretty hard. Couple small attention to detail things right off the bat. So painted elements are limited to the side panel, the trim around the top and the bottom of the case, and the motherboard side of the PCIe riser cable. But the paint looks good and the plastic pieces match perfectly. The color and style, again, remind us of some of those NZXT cases, and obviously the O11, but it really deviates in a few ways. One of them is if you check out the grill work on the paneling, the side and the top, it's all very uniquely and deliberately cut, uh, not in as sort of functional of a, an approach, still somewhat functional, but the downside to the design that Height has taken here is that there, there is a lot of plastic and metal that sort of overlaps in a way where you end up with a good deal of flow to impedance, even though there's bottom intake and there's side intake options here. So, uh, and then obviously top exhaust, if you wanna go that route. Now in terms of marketing, Height is branding this as being a liquid cooling focused case, uh, much like the O11 would be, for example. And we use air cooling for our test system. Now for the most part, these translate fairly one-to-one -one in terms of the relative performance between uh, one system and another on a chart when you're looking at case-to-case -case variation and 
performance differences. However, with water cooling, you can overcome or at least overlook or ignore some of the limitations that are imposed by a case because you just there's more brute force ability to get past those limitations with liquid. All the panels come off really easily like that. The back of the case is actually really interesting as well where it looks pretty good. It's got the dual chamber design and uh, sort of starts us off on the right foot. So let's get started with the build notes and talk about the Y60. Immediately with this case, we noticed attention to detail elements. The height H is molded into the fans, for example, not just put on a sticker. And more branding is punched into the motherboard tray and the hard drive bays and on the back of the case, there's all kinds of markings. None of this adds to the actual functionality, really, or the quality of the case, but it certainly adds the impression of quality. And it looks good. Everything looks clean and purpose-built. And panel fitment is tight everywhere, except between the glass panels, where the gaps seem more intentional. All glass in the case is removable. The glass panels are actually structural. The corner, then, of the case should be supported if you do remove the glass, but it is all easily removable. The dual chamber layout popularized by Lee and Lee is tried and true at this point. Moving the power supply and the drive bays behind the motherboard tray creates a large cable management channel in the vital location between the power supply and the front edge of the motherboard but it also allows the case to be shorter and appear smaller than a conventional mid-tower. The rubber grommets that give access to that cable management space are molded so that they're open at all times, rather than being bent out of position when cables are passed through them. We'd recommend staying below the maximum power supply length of 235 millimeters. Our 160 mil power supply left plenty of room, but longer power supplies will not. Tie points are provided along every cable path, though, including several on the back of the case for tidying up peripherals. Routing cables from the front I.O. to the motherboard can be tricky since the bottom chamber of the case is isolated. The cables can be reached through the bottom of the case by removing the bottom filter or through the side of the case by removing the side panel. But the cutout between the bottom chamber and the side power supply chamber is hard to reach from any angle in an assembled system. As for fans, there are no mounts for front fans, but there are side mounts which perform basically the same function here. Having all of this glass in the front, as we've talked about with the O11 cases, it doesn't make things worse, it doesn't make them closed off, as long as there's side intake and or bottom intake, which is achieved here. Height's design diverges, though, from Lian Li with its partitioned-off bottom chamber that houses two 120mm fans. Tucking the fans into this chamber almost completely hides them from view. It certainly adds a lot more plastic and impedance in the way as well, which we'll talk about momentarily, but it does hide them, and that results in potentially a cleaner-looking build than in an O11 with bottom-mounted fans. It also, however, eliminates any possibility of bottom-mounting a radiator. Now, ultimately, the loss of the radiator isn't huge because the vertical GPU mount would prevent mounting a radiator in the bottom anyway. So this is a feature that was already traded off for somewhere else. The primary radiator mounting location is the side of the case with claimed support for radiators up to 15 centimeters thick. That is massive. That's significantly more than even AlphaCool's giant monster radiators. So plan to use this mount for radiators, fans, and a reservoir or some combination of the three. Otherwise, it's wasted space. In contrast, the removable top mount only supports radiators up to 28 millimeters thick, ruling out a large array of open loop radiators. That's assuming you obey the manual suggestion anyway to install the radiator on top with the fans underneath. It's possible to fit a thicker sub 360 mil radiator on the underside, but it's not officially supported. Full length 360 millimeter radiators must be installed on top of the tray and must have their barbs positioned at the front of the case where there's a cutout for tubes. Installing anything on the underside of the tray will block access to the cable cutouts above the motherboard. It's a shame that there aren't any full-size horizontal expansion slots in the Y60 at all. Height had to make some tough choices to hit a target cost, and this was one of them. It's also one of the larger items that was cut in order to hit that cost target. It makes some sense, given the Y60's focus on liquid cooling, as liquid-cooled cards aren't affected by being pressed up against a side panel, like air-cooled cards are. But it's a major limiting factor for an ATX case to only fit one full-size add-in card. Even if you're not using multi-GPU in the old-school sense, there's still use for multiple large add-in devices. There's a full set, at least, of horizontal low-profile slots that will fit some non-GPU PCIe devices like SSDs, NICs, capture cards, things like that. 
but the lowest slots are blocked by the riser cable, and it also starts to create a trap for heat depending on what you're running in there. For example, some of the capture cards run a little bit hotter and probably would benefit from additional intake if you can get it. We suspect the lack of full-size horizontal slots will mostly be the dominating piece of conversations about the Y60. Because the GPU must be mounted vertically, it's difficult to do any system building or maintenance with the GPU installed. All the PCIe slots, the USB headers, the front panel headers, and every other port on the bottom half of the board, they're all obstructed by the GPU and the riser cable, which must be either removed or really frustratingly worked around. So make sure you build this in the correct order to reduce those frustrations. Drives can be stored in two floating sleds at the rear of the case. Each sled can fit either one three and a half inch drive or two two and a half inch drives, but there's no vibration damping provided. So SSDs are preferable. The sleds eject from the rear of the case, as they do in the Lian Li 011 cases, so some more inspiration drawn there, but there are no rails and no hot swap connectors. Now, EATX is something we've complained about in the past. EATX support in this instance, though, means that there are no obstructions to prevent larger than ATX motherboards from being installed, but there are also no additional standoffs or supports. Any boards that are even slightly wider than ATX will overhang the cable cutouts at the edge of the motherboard tray. And this, in combination with side-mounted radiator and fan combos, may make the cutouts more difficult to access. We've complimented the case's appearance, but some aspects of it don't bode well for thermal results. The bottom filter snaps in flush, for example, with the bottom of the case, and it's reinforced with decorative diagonal crossbars to match the rest of the case. This is an unusual amount of attention to pay to a completely hidden part of the case, and it just causes more impedance to flow anyway. All the extra plastic in those crossbars, it's an obstacle and it's an expense. And that problem is replicated in the interior bottom of the case as well. It's also replicated in the steel side panel and the top panel. They all look great and they all include more layers of material than is actually necessary. This is probably part of why the marketing is toward liquid cooling. Yes, it looks better in a fish tank case, but it also has to brute force its way past some of these flow impedance limitations. And those obviously affect liquid cooling as well. It's just you're able to overcome a lot of that. We performed our normal suite of tests, but for our no front panel test, we instead this time removed the bottom filter from the case. For our standardized fan test, we placed the two intake fans on the side mounts since there's no front mount. When we received our sample unit, Height volunteered up front that, quote, Height intended the Y60 to be used with a liquid cooler, and that, quote, use of an air cooler will result in higher GPU and CPU temperatures. Duh, that's just always true, oh, but okay. And also, they said that two fans should be installed on the side for intake. Obviously, adding two more fans would lead to better thermals for just about any case. There are times if you install them in ways that are conflicting with the existing fans, that wouldn't be the outcome. But for this situation, we don't need a test to know that two extra fans are going to benefit this case. If we just set up all cases how companies suggested, they'd all have extra fans added to compensate for shortcomings of design or to just compensate for not including any fans to begin with. Instead, we ran a pass with two stock bottom intake fans moved to the side so that we could evaluate the case as it is built and with the fans that it's supplied with uh, against the two possible configurations that Height could have chosen for the default. We'll start with just the Height Y60 and some O11 dynamic data on the chart and then add everything else. Torture workload CPU temperature average was 57 degrees Celsius above ambient in the fully stock configuration with all case fans running at the usual 100%. Removing the bottom filter resulted in less than one degree of change, which is within our error margins. If anything, this implies that the bottom fans aren't doing much for the CPU to begin with. The Y60 is deficient in an area that could be useful for the CPU and the GPU alike because there isn't enough pressure to really overcome all of the impedance and get all the way up to the CPU's level. Moving the bottom fans to the side backed up this conclusion as CPU temperatures dropped significantly down to 49 degrees with this change. Again, this is apparently something Height is aware of. The Y60 is explicitly focused on liquid cooling, especially in its stock config. The O11 showed similar behaviors in some ways. We saw better performance for the CPU with side intake as it's closer to the CPU and it faces less impedance. Compared to the rest of the chart, 57 degrees is on the hotter side. 
Comparing the Y60 to the O11D, the O11XL, and the O11 Evo may not be completely fair since we had to add our own fans to Lee and Lee's cases, but all three averaged better than the Y60. And we'll get over to the standardized fans in a moment. Moving the Y60's intake fans to the more air cooling friendly side mount casts it in a far better light, putting it on par with the Be Quiet 500DX's 49 degree average, and we actually like that case. Although the stock fan equipped to O11 Air Mini did still significantly better at 44 degrees average. The Y60 can definitely be made to be good in cooling for air-cooled systems or liquid-cooled systems, but it takes more care than more standard cases. It's similar to its build order in that way, where additional care has to be taken, and if it is, it becomes one of the best cases. GPU temperatures are up now. These started out at 59 degrees above ambient with the stock configuration. Moving the intake fans to the side panels did help slightly, pushing the average down to about 58, but the GPU's fans face the opposite direction, as does the plastic shroud from the intake fans, and benefit less directly than the CPU tower cooler. Removing the bottom filter from the case had more of an effect, dropping the average down to 56 degrees, which is actually a pretty big movement in GPU thermals. In their stock positions, the bottom intake fans are mostly behind the backplate of the GPU, so their ability to cool it is limited even without the filter. The Y60 is not outdoing the O11 Dynamic thus far, but we'll look at that standardized fan testing momentarily. 59 degrees stock or 58 degrees with the side intake, either way, these aren't competitive numbers, although the Y60 at least has the comfort of the O11 Air Mini's company with an identical 59 degree average. We're well acquainted with the fact that air-cooled GPUs don't perform well when they're mounted vertically unless they're pushed sufficiently far back against the motherboard instead of the glass. Our test GPU is a dual slot design and therefore it had approximately four centimeters of clearance between the side panel and its fans. But a triple slot cooler would be nearly flush with the glass and completely suffocated and three slots is not uncommon these days. Uh, 3.5 is actually pretty common now so don't put an air-cooled GPU in here. It's not going to do well. This is not an ideal case for air-cooled GPUs it's definitely unsuitable for three plus slots. Rendering our Blender test scene on the CPU only, so eliminating the GPU workload, raised its average temperature to 38 degrees above ambient. That's a more favorable result relative to the rest of the chart than say in the torture test before. The bottom to top airflow means that the GPU load affects CPU thermals. So in a test where the GPU isn't loaded, the CPU runs cooler. The Y60 is tied here with the original O11D in a configuration with three 120 millimeter side intake fans. GPU thermals stacked up the same way they did in the original torture test with a 27 degree average tying the O11 Air Mini at the upper end of the chart. The bottom intake fans could certainly benefit the GPU a lot more if it were lying flat over them, that is, rather than sitting perpendicularly. The Firestrike Extreme test results replicated the torture test average of 59 degrees. As demonstrated by the Blender tests, running an isolated GPU workload doesn't help much in the Y60, as the GPU is untouched by the CPU's exhaust. The Y60 maintains its chart position and GPU thermals near the O11 Air Mini and the original Cooler Master H500P, with the triple intake O11D landing at a much lower 53 degree average. We can use our standardized fan test for a direct comparison to the O11 family cases that don't come equipped with stock fans. The O11D Evo mesh was performed with front intake, the O11D Evo glass was performed with side intake, and the O11D XL was performed with bottom intake, since the XL can't side mount 140mm fans. But they all use the same fans, same RPM, uh, and as mentioned earlier, we ran side intake in the Y60 for this test. The CPU average dropped to 47 degrees with the standardized fans, lower than any of the tests using the Y60 stock fans in placement. That's hotter than most of the Lian Li results, with the Evo mesh leading significantly. The Evo has an improved mesh side panel, while the Y60 is stuck competing with the original O11D. The Y60's GPU thermals still weren't great with standardized fans, resulting in a 54 degree average, but the O11s didn't do especially well either. The mesh fronted Evo, for example, averaged 55 degrees over ambient, and the glass version averaged 53. And that's just because of how the air escapes the case with the two different versions. The exception is the XL with its bottom intake fans, which put it at an average of 47 degrees. With powerful fans, side intake, and a dual slot GPU, the Y60 is at least not much worse than the competition. Noise normalizing the Y60 to our 36 dBA threshold required reducing the case fans to 75% speed to bring it down from 39.6 dBA. 
The Y60 is fairly quiet for a three-fan case at maximum speed, but that's the result of hiding the fans in a chamber at the bottom of the case, surrounded by filters and plastic. The CPU average rose to 59 degrees from a baseline that wasn't great to begin with, keeping it at the hot end of the chart just below another bottom intake result, the O11XL, when they were noise normalized at the same noise level. The GPU averaged 60 degrees, also at the hot end. Together, those results put the Y60 on par with the Fractal S2 Vision RGB in this test, which is a case that we said was, quote, not even trying. So we spent the last few minutes of the charts being mostly critical of the Y60 for its thermal performance and its performance characteristics. But in spite of that, we actually do like this case, which is pretty rare uh, for Patrick and I to say uh, as a team. We review a lot of cases. Most of them look very similar. and. The dividing line is typically, does it have stupid design elements that ruin an otherwise good case, or does it not have those? And this one has design elements that are unique, but don't completely derail the case from being usable. That's not common. The immediate impression of the case that we get, and we think most people will get, is one of quality from the material and panel quality, the fitment where there's basically no gap anywhere other than where Perhaps it makes some sense, like in the glass here. The paint quality is good. The panel thickness is, is a little above standard in some locations and overall good. The design is unique in a way that it will probably fit in some scenarios, like maybe corners of desks that other cases won't look quite as good in. But in a more standard setup, it doesn't look out of place. And so we like that. It's a little bit less of a utilitarian O11, basically. Everyone in the office here was pretty surprised when we pulled the Y60 out of the box. And we've tried to keep that in mind throughout the review because the thermals really are not impressive. So the biggest weakness on this thing is thermals that are marred largely by those design elements. And we think these design elements can be executed in a way that don't completely choke off the paneling. But if you look at it, really at the top, we'll get some close-ups. It's like at least half plastic. So it looks like a giant opening, except it's covered by plastic and then mesh. And then the bottom, you've got plastic and mesh and plastic. There's a lot of places for the air to be obstructed. So even in a water-cooled build, which yes, it is targeted toward, it will underperform relative to a case which is less restricted, like the O11 series. The O11 Evo destroyed this thing thermally when tested fairly head-to-head -head, like with our standardized testing setups. So that's where its weakness is. It's not such a weakness that you can't make use of this case. It's just that much like in the building process where with this case, you need to be somewhat aware of the order at which you install things, like not putting SSDs on the back before you mount the CPU cooler, for instance, if you're doing it all standing. Uh, the things you need to be aware of are where to position the fans when you're talking thermals. Uh, this case is not quite as obvious as some other ones. So we've already gone through all that. You can check the thermal sections for our recommendations. But the problems are able to be overcome. You just need to put a little bit of effort in as the user. And another big warning here on thermals, too, if you skipped past the thermal section, don't put triple slot cards in this if they are air-cooled. It will go very poorly. Don't do that. Either water-cool them, in which case it doesn't matter if it's vertical because you're not really relying on the fans on the bottom anyway. You're relying on the water elsewhere. Or get a two-slot card where it's acceptable. Competitors to consider then. Uh, so at $200, there's a lot of them. The $180 to $200-ish market right now is very competitive. We would suggest you also look at the O11 Dynamic, the O11 Dynamic XL. The uh, Fractal's actually got a Meshify 2 XL also that's worth looking at. There's the O11D Evo worth looking at. And uh, the Fractal Torrent is a fantastic case at a similar price point, but much taller and definitely a different look. Now, that said, we think that the Torrent and the Y60 have something in common, which is they both have a very abnormal style to them while still remaining mostly functional. Uh, and high quality in terms of the build quality. So those would be the two that we think are the most similar in that vein and worth considering. Overall then, we actually liked it. Uh, if you're looking for a higher performance platform to work out of, we'd recommend the O11D Evo instead. If you're okay with losing some of the thermal capabilities to either manually compensate for it by putting some time in or just brute forcing with water, then this case does some really unique stuff and uh, we're pretty happy with it. So. Good work by Height. It's a shame that it's owned by iBuyPower. Hopefully, they can successfully decouple the relationship or iBuyPower can fix itself. But 
it heights off to a pretty good start here. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net to grab some of our coaster packs. We have 3D coaster designs with PC components on them, like case fans, SMDs, VRMs, MOSFETs, uh, CPU or GPU sockets and components, things like that, all designed into the molding for the coasters. And they come in four packs with one of each design in stock and shipping now. As always, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.